Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while we haven't talked about Salesforce CPQ. Recently, I'm uploading videos on Salesforce billing and Conga CPQ. But yeah, now it's time to move forward with Salesforce CPQ as well. So today we are going to learn about lookup queries. So what lookup queries are and how can we utilize that in Salesforce CPQ? So here is the agenda. So what we're gonna see first is what is lookup query, then what is it used for? then a use case of the same and then we'll review the configuration of the same so what is lookup query and you have been thinking about the same as you can see over here a guy thinking what's lookup query right so lookup queries are the way to dynamically evaluate the condition criteria okay and setting up field values dynamically so ideally when we use product rule or price rule what we do is to execute those product rules and price rule, we used to have our price conditions or error condition. Okay. That will evaluate the condition and it will make it eligible for our uh, product action or price action to be. But what if we don't want to put those static conditions, right? How can we do that without using those static conditions? Let's learn it today. Okay. So what does what it does is it compares quote or quote line data with a custom object and then populate the pricing. So that's the exit use of lookup query, which can compare the data of quote or quote line with a custom object entries, right? And dynamically populate the pricing. In our case, on price rule, consider we are setting up some custom pricing, right? We end up providing formula or static value. But what if we want to make it dynamic using some custom object entries, right? So today we're going to see that. So what is it used for as we have already talked about, but let me just take it through. In product rule, it dynamically add, removes, disables, enable product options in the card or to the card. And in the case of price rule, it dynamically sets the value in the required field without hard coding the value. And as we talked about, right? We don't have to hard code it, but we can create an entry and that custom entry will drive the pricing using that price rule. So what's the use case now? So the use case is, let's say Dell is selling laptops to a customer. The price of the laptops varies by its configuration. We all know, right? The laptop configuration can change, different configuration can change the pricing of the laptop, right? So now we will take an example of a table that's being depicted below. So let's say Dell is selling two laptops. So one is Dell Inspiron, and second is Dell Inspiron 3511. Uh, the name are uh, kind of same. That's for the use case purpose only that we have taken. Okay. Now, if you purchase Dell Inspiron or Inspiron, it's a basic rate is 400 and Dell Inspiron 3511 basic rate is 500 for all of them. Now, if you purchase 16 GB RAM and 512, 512 GB SSD with Dell Inspiron, the price becomes $480. Uh, same for, let's say you purchase 16 GB lap RAM and one TB hard disk, the price became 517. Uh, if 32 GB RAM, 512 GB SSD, price become 520 USD. And in Dell Inspiron, if you purchase 32 GB RAM and one terabyte of uh, SSD, then it becomes 600. And Likewise, same for uh, Dell Inspiron 3511. With each and every combination of RAM and SSD, the price varies. So now we all know, like we can set up block pricing, but block pricing will work on a single field value. Okay. Now we have two driving factor, right? Uh, RAM and SSD are the two factors which will drive the pricing. So how can we do that? So for that, we can use lookup queries and make this dynamic. Now let's review the configuration okay so i'm on a card and let me just first show you two so i'll just to add product and i'll select both the product as soon as i click select will land on the configuration page of dell inspiron and you might have seen like i have configured ram and ss these are the attributes that we configured and based on this attribute will drive the pricing okay. so i'll select 16 gb and i'll select 512 gb over here for dell inspiron over here, I'll go with another product and I'll again select 16 GB and 512 GB of 
SSD and I'll just click save. So now as per our table, the price of Dell Inspiron should be 480 and Dell Inspiron 3501 should be $580. You see Dell Inspiron 3511 is 580 and this one is 480. Now let's change the configuration, right? Let's take one by one. If I make it 32 and SSD is 512, let's see what should be the price coming. It is coming 620 and if you see over here 16, uh, what's the price? 620, right? So 32 GB and 512 GB, it became 620. Now if I go and change the RAM, so I'll, I'll change the RAM to 16 GB and I'll make it one terabyte and let's see the price. So for Dell Inspiron, it should be 660, which is again mentioned over here, 16 GB and 1 TB of combination. And now we'll try 32 1 TB, which should be 700. So let me just try this out. Oh, this is 1 TB, this is 32 GB. And I come over here, it's 700. I can change over here as well. Let's say if I make it 32 and if I make it 1 TB, what should be the price? Let's see. The price comes as 600 and same goes over here, right? So this was how it will work, but how to configure that, right? So for that, what we have to, what will require is will require a custom table. I've created pricing lookup over here. I've created a couple of fields. Let's say product, RAM, SSD, and price. And then we'll require a pricing uh, rule. So in pricing rule, we have already seen in my previous videos like what this fields means so you can anyway check out uh, those videos the only difference over here is lookup object right this depends when we use lookup object which object we will be searching against right the data of quote line or product or product option or quote so that will search upon price lookup so this is the data that is available in price lookup now we'll go to related layer we will not require this condition for our use case, right? But still I have added the use uh, condition is product code not equals null. So each and every product will have code. So just for the depicting purpose, I can, uh, I have specified it. So you can uh, further narrow down the conditions here. Then lookup queries. So what the first lookup query is checking up? Field value of port line. So which field? Product field should be equal to the product field of lookup field. That means uh, this lookup object does have a field called product code. So it is checking this product code with that particular product code of quote line. Then we'll come over here and it says like RAM. RAM equals the RAM available on quote line. Right? So the quote line field RAM should be equal to the RAM field on this object or the record. Right? Then SSD equals SSD. Right? So again, the SSD of that particular line will be checked across this one. Now the thing is, when the price rule will evaluate, this will be creating a where clause on this particular table, whole table. So it will be populating something like select price from lookup queries, where or select price from pricing lookup where product equal to this product the ram value on quote line equals to ram value of this and ssd value of quote line equal to this now using this combination it is necessary that we are returning only one row so make sure you have unique combinations over here if you have two rows of the same right let's say this row is duplicate then you will end up having an error that lookup query has written more than one result okay so make sure you have a unique combination over here so now once we get the lookup query running and we have got let's say this record then what we should be expecting is we should be expecting this price to be put in list price. So for that, what we can do is we can simply write a price action where we can see we have target field. That means which field we want to set and the source lookup field, which contains the APA name of the field or of the object that is available over here, right? 
and that contains the exact price that we want to push to the list price so that way we can dynamically set up the pricing and using the attribute as well we can drive the pricing of any particular product so thank you very much for watching the video uh, please like and share the content if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel thank you very much